I would say get involved in things outside of athletics. Like for me, I'm involved in a sorority. Like I did SAC and I did um, I did Black Student Union. When I came to college, I was just willing to do any and everything. And it also just like allowed me to make more friends and make more connections. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? Family, are you tired of spending money and dollars trying to find the perfect recorded sound audio to enhance your podcast? Well, look, I'm going to save you some time and I want to introduce you to Audio Hero. All right. They have professionally recorded music and sound effects with a library of over 300,000 songs, which are royalty free, that music, in addition to sound effects. So I'm going to drop a link just down below in the show notes to where you can take full advantage of the monthly plan or the annual plan. And they're willing to take 30% off on the monthly or 50% off on the annual plan. All right. So what you need to do is click the link just down below and type in JJS30 to take advantage of the 30% off plan, or just type in JJS50 to take advantage of the 50% off plan from our friends over at Audio Hero. Now back to the episode. What's going on, family? Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. And this is your number one source for podcast news, podcast how-tos, and also interviews. And today we have we have another spectacular guest, and and, and I'm I'm excited to to, to share uh, this conversation uh, with, with this young lady that we're about to have today. But before we dive in, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce her. I'm gonna give a little bit of the resume, and 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 then I'm I'm gonna let you take it from there. So, uh, <laughs> so she's currently uh, currently a student at Illinois State University, a student athlete, you know, competing in volleyball, you know, right? Uh, she's the, she's the Redbird Sack president which is student athlete advisory committee right in addition to that um, she's also the guest host of the 1q leadership podcast without further ado help me welcome miss kendy hilliard how you doing kendy hi everyone and hi thanks for having me yeah for sure for sure now uh now i mean i'll go ahead and kick it over to you and i'll let you you know give like a little snapshot of yourself um just for those who this might be you know their first introduction to you so you have the floor. Yeah, so like you said, my name is Kendi. I'm a current student athlete here at Illinois State. And um, I've enjoyed my past three years. So this is my senior year, which is kind of exciting and kind of nerve wracking a little bit just because you just don't know what you want to do after after sports and after your career. But I've worked with SAG to make sure we have some things for student athletes in general for life after sports. So I'm a little bit ahead. Um, I just, I'm going to graduate with my master's in December and that's exciting. But um, other than that, I'm a poodle. I'm from, I'm a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated and I'm from the great state of Texas, a really small town though. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. What, 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 what town are you from in, in the great state of Texas? So um, I'm about like maybe 20, 30 minutes away from Waco and I'm right in the middle of Dallas and Austin. Mm, okay okay gotcha gotcha because i'm out in lancaster so yeah really okay. so yeah. you know um the kalachi town west texas the check stop like kalachi's check heritage west fest that's where i'm from oh uh, ne ne never i haven't have not heard of it before but um but but also i saw that you know you 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 know you had some time at mcclendon and when i when i when i uh played junior college ball I remember that we had like a comp, we had not a conference, but we had like mm -hmm. a jamboree type deal at McClendon on like Halloween night. I'll never forget that. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's super cool. Super cool. Super cool. All right. So, so I know that you, well, you just share with us, you know, you getting ready, got like, got them, got the master, get the, got the masters coming up. So what, what does happen next for you or, or what, what do you want to happen next? Right. So I I prefer or I'm aspiring to be an athletic director at the division one level later down the line. Um, but currently I'm just doing the little things of like picking and deciding if I want to take my COVID year or not um, and how and when I want to get into the industry. 
But right now it's just a lot of making connections with people all across the nation who are in, in the industry as well. And um, it's, I think it's just been really exciting because I've done internships in the compliance office here and um, just student athlete engagement and then interning with the SWA and our deputy athletics director. And I recently um, just tried to dive into the development sector as well. So I've been kind of all over the place in my undergrad and in my master's, just seeing what I like and what I actually love and what I want to spend the rest of my, like, not my time, but like getting that, my foot in into the door of like, just starting in the field of athletics, because I feel like to be a great AD, you need to be skilled in all aspects, or at least know a little bit about something that's going on in every sector. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so you said take take a you know you said take a COVID year. So so what what does it mean to take a COVID year? Just for those who may not may not be aware. Yeah, so because of COVID, my my sport, which is volleyball, was granted. Um, we were granted an extra year to play essentially. So we have four, four years and five years sometimes when you um, like red shirt, but I didn't red shirt my freshman year or any of my years. So the NCAA, because of COVID granted us an extra year to participate in our sport. So um, for me, since this is, this will be my senior year, I have my senior year in the fall and then I have an additional year um, that I can take as well. Hmm. So you, so you said you haven't decided yet if you're gonna if you're gonna take it or not or. I haven't decided yet. Like, um, I love volleyball and I love all the coaches that I've had. I've actually, this is my second coach and she just came in and I've really enjoyed just interacting with her. And I also love my old coaching staff who recruited me and everything like that. But it's just been an experience just to play and like not to brag on myself or brag on my team, but we've won back-to-back-to-back NBC championships, which is our conference championships. And then we've gone to the NCAA um, maybe four years now, four years in a row now. So wow. I've, I've had my, I have my rings. I have all the championships and titles. It's just a matter of um, just wanting to play that one year, one last year and get that one, that one itch that you want to scratch essentially. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like that. And then, um, you know, because one, one thing I have seen just across the landscape, uh, just in terms of uh, co- collegiate sports is a lot of people with the COVID year, some people may stay like where, where they're at. Some people transfer out and then, you know, they, they take that new year. They take that COVID year with another team or, you know, might, might go on because, you know, like you, you're already in the thick of it with your master's. But some, you know, might go on so they can pursue that master's at another institution. Mm hmm. It's, it's, it's just it's just an interesting conversation, right? Because it's like staying on one side, staying loyal to the team or, you know, you just enjoy being there or, you know, like a new opportunity, a new opportunity. For sure. Yeah. And and I feel like no matter the choice, you can't go wrong with the decision you make. Like there's always going to be a pro in every situation, especially like if you go somewhere new, like that's a new opportunity and a challenge. Like for me, I'm from Texas. I moved all the way to Illinois, but like what if I wanted to go home and play like an additional year somewhere closer to home? They're like, that's a good, that's a pro because you're close to home. But like, what if I do stay? That's another year of loyalty that I've made to my school. And if I go somewhere else, like it, there's really no wrong decision. And I support like every athlete who does make that decision because I, I know I'm like in the thick of it right now and I'm trying to make that decision for myself. But like, there's really no wrong answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really love just your perspective on, on, on that and, and just talking about how, for, for one, you know, supporting the athlete in their decision and just understanding that now more than ever, there's like a lot of decisions to where either people are pro athlete or people might just be against, you know, the decision just mm-hmm. because it, 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 it's easy when you're not the one competing in between those lines or, you yeah. know, on that track or in that pool and you're like, well, I think this person should have did this or they should have did that or it's just one of those things. It was one it's one of those uh, it's one of those conversations to where I I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I just think that everybody has their perspective based on, you know, that experience that they have, whatever it might be. Yeah. And I think it's kind of interesting to see if like how people attach NIL to it. Cause like that's essentially making the big bucks whenever you transfer. But like I feel like sometimes in in certain cases, obviously, it's way more than it's way more than NIL, essentially. Mm-hmm. So I feel like 
too many people are focusing on the NIL portion and like not specifically asking why that why that student athlete wanted to transfer or why that student athlete is making that for sure decision because like like I said for me like it could be I just wanted to move closer to home but mm -hmm. like no one's like thinking about that situation because it's all the dollar bills on here. Okay, Candy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, 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 that's a great, that that's really a great point. And, and of course, you know, we always can bring whatever, we always can project what we think or what we feel onto somebody else, because then if that makes them against our train of thought, then it's easier to justify why, why they're wrong versus mm -hmm. not in any way. Anyway, we'll have to stay there. We'll have to stay there. <laughs> we'll have to stay there. <laughs> So I'm 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 interested just to hear just to hear this story just to hear the story of how how you came into like how did you come into the the guest host role for the One Q Leadership podcast? first just tell us a little bit about the the One Q Leadership uh, podcast and then and then I, I want to hear the story I want to get the tea yeah you want to get the tea of course of course yeah. um so one one question leadership podcast is essentially just about like asking college execs and just different people who are invested in the sports industry about like their leadership philosophy, um, why they do what they do, what makes them tick and just like kind of, um, I don't know, just like spreading the wealth and spreading the love of like just making sure we're all building our leadership perspective. Because what I learned from one person is totally different from what I learned from someone else. And like for me, the way I use it is just to kind of like make that connection with other people in the industry. And like I've um, interviewed Patty Phillips, who is like the CEO of Women Leaders. And like she was phenomenal. I've interviewed other people as well. And I think um, just for me, like I said, I'm picking the best qualities of them and making it kind of my own. And I've really enjoyed that experience and that opportunity. So that's kind of how I used it, and that's what it, essentially it is. But um, the T behind it is the person who runs it, um, we're like family friends, and he was my brother's mentor. And like I was just, I'm nine years younger than my brother, who actually works in the industry as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm nine years younger than him, and he was his mentor. And then finally, I, I grew up a little bit. And he became my mentor, and like I told him that I had aspirations of being an athletic director, and he was just like, "Wait, I can do something with this." <laughs> and um, he gave me the opportunity just to sit down and start interviewing people. And like I've never really, I at first I wasn't comfortable with asking people questions just online, like that just that seems a little awkward. But I could love, I love the opportunity of just talking to someone, like picking up the phone and just reaching out like hey like what makes you think this and like how did you think that and i just love that opportunity and how did you get into the industry and so then he like saw that this this was a perfect platform for not only me but like seeing that perspective from a student athlete was going to like be beneficial for others as well especially in the talks of like mental health and like making sure like administrators and college execs are listening to their student athletes so that's kind of the role i serve as a guest host of listening and like giving that that feedback and that perspective of a student athlete yeah that's super dope that's that's that's, that's super super dope um because i have this uh philosophy that i feel that um podcasts are the new internship <laughs> and and then I've, I've been telling people that and people been looking at me like i'm crazy so i i want to i want to hear from you like what's what what would you say has been like like if you just shared like a takeaway or takeaways from you, you know, being a, being a guest, being a podcast host, mm -hmm. basically, what, 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 what would you say some takeaways have, have been for you? Um, I would say like one takeaway is like that it's at my like grasping hands. Like it, it's released on Spotify, Apple play, like all different platforms. And like, you can easily just sit down or like for me, whenever I'm in the kitchen and I'm listening to Ty's episodes, which is my, my um, mentor, I'm, I'm like cooking dinner. And like you have the ac the access of listening to those things while you're doing something else and you can multitask. So I love that that opportunity and that takeaway. And then another one is just um, just like learning new things. Like I'm always like about just like putting myself out there and just learning from someone else who has a different path. Because ev what I've learned and what I've like seen is that everyone in the sports industry and especially college execs, like they don't have the same path. 
like my path to my um, other mentors is not going to be the same. Like I graduated my undergrad in two and a half years and I'm getting my master's within the four years I've like played volleyball. So like everything is just, it's not like a direct path and like the, following the yellow brick road essentially. So those have, those are really my two top takeaways. Yeah, man. I think, I think that makes, that makes so much sense, uh, especially understanding that if you have other interests and stuff like that, that you may or may not have explored just yet, but you talk to somebody who is in that field or doing that thing, then you get to have a conversation like in real time and say, oh, okay, well, oh, I never thought about this. I never would have done that. Or I never would have even looked at this job or that job. So, you know, then getting able to ask those questions and talk to those people. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. So what, so what, what is it that, that 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 has you desiring to become an an athletic director is it somebody you knew is it is it just you like what they do like what talk about that yeah so the uh, first time i knew i wanted to be an athletic director was in eighth grade um i had um did an internship with my high school ad and i told him i was like after i finish after i finish playing i'm gonna come back and take your job and then i'll be the volleyball coach and that's just kind of how that went and then, so I did that my kind of all four years and like I did game day operations, learned how to do score scorekeeping for basketball, other sports, ran the concession stand, like cleaned up the whole gym, just got it all ready. And um, I was like, I kind of like doing this. I kind of like getting the nitty gritty and doing like the, the weird, the, the jobs no one else wants to do. And then like seeing it all in like full effect. And then whenever um, I started getting on my recruiting journey, I met, um, I came on my unofficial visit to ISU and I met my SWA and I was like, I, didn't, I never knew what an SWA was. And I was like, I kind of like this. And um, ISU already has like a rich history of women in athletics. So just learning from her. And I knew, um, I kind of like, I don't know if I set myself up for this, but um, she asked me like, oh, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then I told her like full fledged, I was like, I want to be you. <laughs> And like, uh, she was, I think she was caught off guard a little bit, but eventually like I did my junior internship with her. I did my senior internship with her. And I just really loved like the aspect of drawing in the community. And um, for me, like I had a staff role. I was vice president my junior year and then um, president my senior year. And I had the, the aspect of having that perspective as a student athlete and just reaching out beyond just our, our 400, 500, student athlete population to like what what do we need as student athletes and like especially now with like social injustice and like mental health and more at, more student athletes speaking up I was like oh I have this perfect platform that I want to be an aspiring AD and like we've had the trend of like ADs not listening or like um, college athletics or like college um, administrators not listening to their student athletes so I knew I wanted to be that person and be that AD that did so it starts from my perspective as a student athlete and I'm like reaching beyond, reaching beyond like what it is now. Wow, man. I, wow. I'm, I'm here for it. Kendi, I'm here for it. <laughs> you, get me, you get me fired up over here. Um, one, because I mean, you're not just saying a, a position, a job, a title, a career just for the sake of, oh, that sounds cool. But I mean, you put some thought into this thing. I can oh, tell you, you put some thought into it and. Uh, even just the way you're really walking it down and laying it out, uh, seeing that if change hasn't happened or, you know, the change that you desire to happen hasn't yet happened, then you're, you're saying, I'm going to go first and I'm going to become the change, mm -hmm. which, I, which, which, which I think is, is pretty dope. And in just a parallel, this could be a reach, but even seeing just the fact of like you, you were talking about doing the game day operation stuff. Like, I don't know what your first experience was when you walked into the gym or whatever, but either way, you know, you you said you like doing the nitty gritty and then connecting that with, you know, the, the AD position. So, yeah, kudos on that. Kudos. Yeah, thank you. And I would like to say that I'm the first, but I'm not the first. Like, I highly respect um, Renee Miles Payne from my, Miami, um, Dr. Candace Story Lee, Carla Williams. Like, I respect all of those women so much. And, like, they've inspired me to keep pushing as well. The same to my mentor here. Um, Leanna Bordner so I, it's not just me like I'm they're like breaking the glass ceiling and I'm like kind of etching my way through 
Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's commendable in, uh, in, in, in itself as well, because one thing I don't, I don't really like, right? One thing I do not like is when people, you know, they, they show up and they're like, hey, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm here for it, da, 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 whatever, whatever. And then they don't acknowledge like other people who've poured in or who've invested into them and you've taken that time. So yeah, kudos yeah. on that too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. You didn't know you're going to get that many kudos today, huh? did you? I didn't. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So like if there was if, if, if there was a message that, that that you just wanted to share with you know, with your fellow student athletes just across the country, right? Because, you know, you're, you're a senior and you say you're going back and forth on, on the fifth year, the fifth year or not, I don't know, what if I do, <laughs> what if I don't? Like, what what would be the message that, that, that you would just share with, 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 with student athletes out there everywhere? What, what mm-hmm. would be the message, Candy? What do they need to hear? Um, I would say get involved in things outside of athletics. Like, for me, I'm involved in a sorority, like, I did SAC and I did um, I did Black Student Union. When I came to college, I was just willing to do any and everything. And it also just like allowed me to make more friends and make more connections, especially on the campus side, because at, I don't know if it's at like every school, but at some schools, like it's split between like athletics and um, academics um, or the campus side. And I like love bridging the gap. So like this past year with SAC, um, we started the connection of being an RSO, which is, um, I can't think of the the acronym, but we started becoming an RSO again and re- being a part of SGA so like, in student government. So I like love bridging that gap because they need to hear from our student athletes as well because they they see us in class and they some some of them probably think we're just dumb jocks, like just kind of there sitting at the back of the class, which... I do not sit at the back of the class. I sit at the front and I'm always talking. My my professors probably wish I would shut up at some point. But um I would say like they come and they don't they don't know us as student athletes or they don't they just know us as student athletes and they don't know us as like kindy. Like that's my friend who's on the volleyball team. They just know us as like oh the person who doesn't do their group work project, which I also do. <laughs> so I think like having that that accountability and that relationship with other students is going to like be like a lifelong like a, an achievement essentially because that way you're working with someone outside of like your sport your um, athletics and like I've met so many friends that like are probably going to be in my wedding and and they're just not even athletes or student athletes so I think my highly or my recommendation is getting involved in things outside of athletics yeah that's strong and to make sure you are involved in in your group group projects because i was yeah. i was the one who wasn't i was the one who wasn't really involved in the group i was like well okay when we present then i'll present but um other than that i wasn't the most active uh group member so you're so. probably the introduction and conclusion person oh <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It was a while ago, you know. Yeah. Who's counting? You know, I don't. I don't know. Do you know? No judgment. No judgment. I'm just saying. Somebody has to do it. You know. Of somebody. Course. Hey, some somebody got to bring the appetizer. And somebody got to bring the dessert. It is what it is. Fair, fair, fair. Anyway, fair. anyway. <laughs> so I was on your I was on your Instagram, and and I saw you got the opportunity to meet Jamel Hill. I did. Talk yes. talk about talk about that. What what was that like? Cause cause I know we don't call her Miss Hill, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Um. That was an amazing experience. I um loved every second of it, and I um we were debating a little bit about who was the goat in basketball. Like she, um, she was like, I'm from the LeBron James era. Like I love me some LeBron James, and I think he's the goat. But she just she wasn't having it. I can't remember who she thought it was, but. Uh, she's like from Detroit so like I think it was a piston or it could I don't know it it just it didn't align with what I what I agreed with but um, I got the opportunity to have dinner with her at our um, at an event she was speaking at on campus and um, we were just talking about just that like who the goat is and just some other things of and I actually met her prior to the dinner um, at another like a pre-dinner and I just got to ask her questions about like refilling your cup like 
how do you give when you don't have a lot? And like she said, like bringing your your 100% to the only the 30% that you have. And I thought that was like really exceptional because I, I'm like always working. Like I want everything done in a certain way. And like, I cannot literally stop working. Like even at home, like at 11 o'clock, I'm doing something sack related. So like bringing my full self, like bringing that 30% that I have left and a hundred percent of it. And she was talking about it in relationships, but like just in work too. And I thought that was like really impactful and just being a black woman in the industry who is, it's not like very known for like being a black woman. And that just like, it, it was a lot of re- relatability in those talks. So that's what I admire. And I like respect her. She's even, she's um, interviewed several of my sorors or at least one soror that I know, MC Light. Um, and like, I love Unbothered. And I even asked her, so like, how are you Unbothered? <laughs> And I felt like a little bit like a podcaster, like I normally am, but like, I just felt legit at that moment. But then she was just like, she just gave me a good answer. So I was like, "Uh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I I love it. I love it. So after you, so after you, you know, graduate or going through the process and everything like that, have you ever considered starting your own podcast? Um, I I don't know yet. I don't know quite yet. Cause just because I like, I don't think I can sit still enough just to focus on one thing. That's my problem now. Like with me, I like I have to do multiple things, and like, be like getting the questions down for each and every person and doing your research on someone. Like that takes a lot of time, and I'm gonna put all my effort into it. So I don't know if I could do it, but like I would support and like like this if Ty were to ever ask me to do like another interview like on the side like I totally would but I don't know if I could make this my career but I I love doing them like I love I love researching but then at some points I just I don't know it's a possibility but also like I I don't know I clearly don't know what I'm doing with my my life for the next next year so like it, it could be somewhere down the line but I would love to be a a guest or like guest host sometimes like yeah i got you and i mean i'm i'm not gonna say you don't know what you're doing because i mean your, your your gpa speaks for itself which which i see is flying colors and then in addition to that you know you're on the way to getting a master's so i i think that right there eliminates the the i don't know piece it's just the <laughs> you know you're you're not you're not married to certain ideas or right. the or the end of the idea or the end of the era but you, yeah. you, you know you know something over there you know something over there man. maybe a little bit maybe a little bit <laughs> yeah you, you know you know something over there okay 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 so now now we're gonna we're gonna transition to something like to call this or that okay, okay i'm ready i'm ready yeah 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 so so this is this is a this is the part of the show where i like to have a little bit of fun we do some rapid fire and i'm gonna ask you a question and you're gonna answer with this or that Got are it. you are you ready I'm ready. Are are you you were aware of this segment already? You knew about this segment? Oh yeah, I had to research you just as much as you had to research me. So I've listened to several of your podcasts. Hmm. Okay. Well, they're not going to be the same questions. Okay. Dang. I was re- I was re- rehearsing <laughs> some of them, but okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Beaches or mountains? Beaches. Winter or summer? Summer, of course. Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Popeyes. Hmm. 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 You, you talking about the spicy chicken sandwich, or are you talking about just like the regular chicken? Regular chicken. Ah. Okay. 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 Podcasts or audio books? Podcasts. Easily. East Coast or West Coast? Oh. <laughs> i'm gonna go east coast yeah i'm gonna go east coast that's fair see that was harmless see that wasn't even that wasn't even bad that well i'm not even bad. from either like i've only been like i've only lived in texas in the midwest so like i was like saying water or oil essentially <laughs> <laughs> i got you that's funny so what what podcasts do you think is like a slept on podcast that more people need to know about 
Hmm. That's a tough question. I don't know. Ooh, the, because I like I love podcasts. Like I I listen to this one on Spotify. Oh, what is it called? Oh, I have to think about it. Skip. <laughs> Can I skip? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's so funny. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that's so funny candy please let people know where they can find you follow you and connect with you to follow your 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 journey that you're continuing to build out as you progress forward in it yeah for sure so first i have to plug my own podcast essentially you can find us on instagram and twitter at one q and then leadership and that's where you'll find us and then me personally, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter. I'm not really on TikTok, but um, LinkedIn as well. But Instagram and Twitter, it's K-E-N-K-E-N-D-E-E. -E -E, and that's where you'll find me. Boom. There, there it is. There it is. And I'm, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come to you for, for, for the final thought in, in just one second. I'm about to do this little, little commercial commercial. Right. Um, but for, for, for all my, all my people out there who are watching, who are listening and everything like that. And you heard, you heard Candy talk about, you know, her having her podcast. You're listening to this because this is a podcast or you're watching it because it's a podcast, but also good people. Uh, I want to help you start your own podcast. So I wrote an ebook. I put everything you need to know, and it's in this ebook, and it shows you how to start the podcast all the way up to how you can even make money from the podcast. So it covers every question that you think you might have thought of having, right? So you can just go down to the link uh, in the show notes, and it's just get paid with podcasting forward slash book, get paid with podcasting.com forward slash book. Now back to the episode and back to Kendi for the final word. What's what's the final word that you just want to leave with the people? What you you because you poured out a lot, you poured out a lot. You dropped the gems, you gave the shout outs. You know what I'm saying? You you didn't give us the decision of what happens next, but that's cool. You know you're gonna <laughs> get that exclusive somewhere else. But what what's the final thought that you want to just leave with the people? Um, I've said this on Twitter and a couple of other interviews, but deming your deming someone else's candle will not light your own. That's what I have to say. And that I've said that on several other interviews, but like dimming someone else's light won't make yours shine brighter either. So that's that's my final word. So give shout outs where they are due. Okay. 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 There it is. There it is. Uh Kendi Hillier, thank you so much for taking the time to to grace us with your presence and you know share share your your, your story and some of your experiences with, with the good people. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed this talk and can't wait to collab in the future. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. All right, folks, everybody out there who's listening, who has took, taken the time to watch. If you're on YouTube, I'd encourage you just to subscribe to the channel. If you, you know, uh, we're, we're watching or, or listening, uh, make sure to hit, hit the link just down in the show notes to where you can, you can find Kendi, you can follow her journey and, you know, see what mountain she overcomes next. All right. Wh wherever it is in life, but, uh, family, this is a, your podcast mentor show. And I'm Jonathan Jones, uh, reminding you all that this is the spot here where we help you, uh, establish your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. All right. Until next time, peace and God bless.